There are so many benefits to painting outdoors, but in this video, I'm not going to try to convince you to do it. Instead, I'm just going to share my setup, what I'm taking with me. This video is not a tutorial. I will do a quick sketch later, but the goal is to show the options that we have when taking pastels outdoors and how to make this a better painting experience. Its true plein air setup can get really elaborate and expensive. But you don't need to invest a lot of money right away to buy an expensive easel. Figure out first if you really enjoy painting outdoors. And you can do it with just packing a backpack with pastels, with some rigid board where you will attach your paper. And also to prevent your clothing getting really colorful, putting something on your lap like a piece of plastic or a towel will keep you cleaner. I would be lying if I said that this is most convenient setup. At least for me it's not. I like painting standing so that I see more of the ground, more of the landscape. It does depend on your eye level and using the easel allows me to do that. Besides, not everywhere you will have a bench or something to sit on. It is possible to use a pretty basic easel, less expensive one, but you have to figure out how to get your pastels to the level where you can easily reach for them. So I prefer to have a system that includes a tripod, a pastel box that I can attach to it, and an easel that goes into the box. It's very portable and if your pastel box is not very large, it's not very heavy either. But that also depends on the tripod. For example, a larger tripod that I have, which is sturdier and we do need that with pastels, but that tripod definitely adds the weight and it's nice if I go by car car somewhere and I don't have to carry it too far. But if I'm traveling, particularly by plane somewhere, I want to have a lighter tripod. It's a little bit less sturdy, but it's still really good. Especially if I hang the heavy backpack in the middle of it. I use a smaller Hailman double sketch box with this Sirui, if I pronounce it correctly, carbon fiber tripod. It makes it sturdy but lighter. And my Hailman backpack, the larger box, pairs with my larger tripod. In my case, the brand of this tripod is Easel. It's a special brand, but good sturdy tripods for photo and video camera will do fine. They are created to keep the fragile, expensive photo equipment safe, so they will do the same for our pastels. Initially, I had a regular folding easel that was for oils and that worked fine, but like I mentioned, it doesn't have a way to attach the pastel box to it. So yes, it's the cheapest option, but you either need to find a place where you can put your pastels so that they are within your reach or have something like a folding table for that. That's why I love my Hellman boxes. You can just attach them to the tripod, insert the easel in the box and you're good to go. I have this information about the boxes I'm using, the tripods listed in the description below, so it's there. And also, if this video is helpful to you, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Now I'm going to show you how this easel system works on location, how quickly I will be ready to paint, and I'll share a few tips on how to make plein air painting a bit easier by being better organized. I would like to show you what I am using, my setup my plein air setup. I do get a lot of questions about that and today seems like a perfect day to do that. So I have my backpack usually where I have different smaller things but one very important piece of equipment is a tripod and this is a nice and sturdy one and that's what you need because otherwise your pastel box with precious pastels, precious colors might end up on the ground and you definitely don't want that. So this is very easy to set up. It's very quick. But one thing about this little clipping things, <laughs> whatever they are, if you get sand into those, if you're painting at the beach, be careful to wipe this wipe them off so that you don't get any sand inside because that would make it not work, not fold properly. And now 
I also need one more thing here. And it's actually good to do it right away, not before you mount the box. This is the part that you definitely need because if you don't have it, this, this part, this top part to which the box will be attached might move. The box is heavy and it might be moving. And again, if you took the covers off, your pastels tilted, not a good thing. So to stop it, we just do this right away and it's going to be steady. So then all I have to do is to do this, to fit it, oops, the other way. And sometimes I forgot to attach this part to my box and without it, you cannot mount it, of course, you cannot just connect it to the tripod so always check it always check before you leave the house so let's do that this is by the way um hellman pastel box i really like their boxes and if it's too high right now i can adjust the height to the size I need a little bit more and by the way just for the video I see I didn't put this right so that you can see how it works there are the holes here and that's where the easel as we call it goes and that is just this so it's nice compact and it goes this way all right the box is secured it's not going to move anywhere it still seems to be having a little bit of this horizontal movement but that's fine and i apologize for the noise but in plein air situation we cannot really control it so this attachment here allows me to have my portable easel and that's where the dust collects also which is important so that it doesn't dirty up the pastels underneath and to keep it light the board I'm using is actually just a foam core board and usually i kind of try to prepare for plein air situation and maybe i should have it taller oops so you see how easily it's coming out but usually when we work with pastels we use very light pressure so let's do this this will be according to your height of course what's best for you what's best level for you oops mine is somewhere at this level i think okay now this is all set up and i can just peel this glycine and make sure it's somewhere ready for later to put over the work i do and right now it's a little bit okay here we are so i'm ready to go and it might kind of feel a little shaky but when we work with pastels we really don't press hard because that's the point you don't want to press too hard because then you just fill the paper with pigment but you want to preserve that tooth and right now i just need to put this somewhere next let's open the box that's the exciting part and that's what's going to make all the passerbys to stop by <laughs> but don't be intimidated people just love to see color and i don't blame them because look at that so where do these go i just want to put them in the 
yeah in the bag so that they are not flying away which is important because i will need to cover this box otherwise there's no way to secure them i also have hot pastels and i also have something that maybe i should show you right now other things that i keep in this bag so there's the brush this brush is a bristle brush this is just for the underpainting the softer acrylic brush and i have for that a little bit of a, it's a different container but that's the isopropyl alcohol and that would go together if i were doing the wet and the painting technique so i can put this back and something you absolutely need to make sure you have is a masking tape what is this one well that's something that you can use instead of just putting glycine over this you can take this piece of paper and insert in here so this comes off uh, and there's more here and this will be inside of this plastic kind of enclosure and later you can take that out and you can also have your pieces of paper ready to go here in different sizes what i also use sometimes is this clear envelopes or clear cases maybe not sure so if my piece of paper fits into this i would just insert it there and tape it and that's also nice and secure so it will not do the smudging and some artists prefer to work on pre-mounted paper so it's on this also kind of very light sturdy panels so you wouldn't even have to use this foam core board you would just insert this and that's it you just work on this and it wouldn't buckle so that's a big advantage but i just took it to show it right now i'm not going to use it and these are the hard pastels i don't keep my hard pastels together with soft pastels because then when they are worn out very thin the soft pastels it's hard to recognize which one is which so these are together and not organized by color but these are so that's my plenaire setup and let's do something with it all right something else i'm doing here to prepare for painting is a couple of paper towel pieces and one i want to wet it a little bit so i'll just do that like this and it shouldn't be dripping but it should be wet enough and that is to wipe my fingers my glove and one is dry so that i dry it and somewhere i don't know somewhere here so also can wipe my pastel stick off if it gets dirty something i didn't bring today that i usually bring with me it's charcoal so instead of charcoal to kind of mark my drawing i'm just going to use hot pastel and maybe let's use something neutral like this and i want to do this tree a sketch of this tree and it's going to be just a very quick sketch so just to give you an idea how i would go about it so the shape of the tree this kind of v and there are a few rocks initially i did plan to record my whole plein air painting process so that i can share it with you but in a few minutes after i set up my easel the group of about 20 people set up in circle for their apparently regular meeting and right behind me 
So if I continue to record my video as I'm painting, I'd be recording all their conversations as well. So that's why now I'm using my footage creatively. The part of showing you how to set things up was still pretty good, so I decided to share with you at least that and a little bit of sketching. Just see how they relate to each other. And usually what's happening, and to me too, I kind of start squishing them a little bit to fit the piece of paper. Well, not always, but sometimes you work on something and then you just realize, okay, this should be larger or taller. And let's see, somewhere here, maybe this goes and then we have this branches. Again, this is just the tree. It's not as crucial. And then we have the lovely water. So here's the ground rocks somewhere here. We have that grass in the distance starting. So this is kind of like sepia. I think it is actually sepia color. And I am working on kind of mid-tone tan color paper. So let's do that. So I start with the idea of kind of trying to measure things. see how they relate to each other, but eventually if something is not quite the same size, no one will know, right? So don't, don't make your drawing too stiff. And something like this here. So that gives me some idea of what's happening. And the main thing right now is values. So I might also do a little bit of blending. When it's the super dark, super dense dark values, we are going to get them kind of richer, darker, if we blend them in because uh, that lighter color of the paper is not going to interfere. Oops, where is it? Here. So that's my tree, the beginning of the tree. It will be covered with some foliage. And here we go. So that's the distance. There are some branches over here, but that's small stuff that I can add later. So right now it's just important to kind of take a look and see exactly what's darker and what's lighter. And be concerned about that more than small details. That was an interesting experience, but it just shows that in a plein air situation we cannot plan everything, and honestly, that's the fun part. I hope that the information about the plein air easels that would work with pastels was helpful. Please give this video a like if it was, and please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see the plein air painting recorded.
and I'll try to find a spot where it can be done with fewer distractions. Thank you for watching.